Did you know vampires also make excellent choices for a leech pattern, particularly a micro or a baby leech? Join me, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my fly tying bench. If you've been here before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time visiting here, I produce fly tying and fly fishing video content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more successful. Today we're tying the baby vampire, or as I like to call it, the Eddie Munster, in reference to the Munsters TV series for those of you who remember. This fly is a variation of Todd Oshie's excellent still water pattern, the Vampire Leech. Todd is a competitive fly fisher and has proven this fly to work throughout the world. I like to use this little baby vampire, or Eddie Munster, when I'm fishing shallow water situations, particularly in early spring and late fall, but it's a great pattern to use any time of the season. So join me at my bench and I'll show you how I tie it. If you enjoy the content on this channel, please consider subscribing. And of course, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like. Remember, all the links to the materials and tools I use in this video will be shown in the description below. So let's get to my bench and tie you an Eddie Munster. Let's tie the baby vampire, or as I affectionately refer to it as the Eddie Munster. For those of you who remember the Munsters TV show, if you're of my age group, to remember those. And special thanks to Todd Oshie for creating the vampire leech that has spawned all these variants. Just a simple fly that's just so deadly. Into the jaws of the vise, I placed a Daiichi 4640 number 12, my favorite size to tie this fly. This is a favorite fall fly for me when I'm fishing a lot of these baby or micro leeches. And then I've also slid onto the hook as well a tungsten head turner bead 764 in chartreuse. And you see the teardrop shape of these. And right here is one that you can really see that concave side of the, the bead. That's what we've done. We slid the concave side but we'll put it on so the concave side is towards the hook eye so it hangs over so when we tie this on to our leader using a clinch knot this fly will hang horizontally so now we're going to uh, start our tying thread i'm just using some black any thread will do i'm just using some of the simplify uh, nano silk and 12 watt black strong stuff it's a gel spun thread so we're just going to get that started it's a little slippery Sometimes you can put a little coating of super glue down first, but I just get it sort of started, maybe with a few more wraps than I would for, you know, regular, like a UTC thread or a uni thread or a Techstream. And we're just going to cover that shank to give a good firm, ba good thread base. And we're going to come back forward up to the hook eye. And the first thing we're going to do is secure in our tail. And for the tail, one of my favorite tail materials, instead of marabou, I think Todd, for his original vampire, used rabbit. Uh, perhaps I'll have to tie the original vampire someday. And uh, but we're just going to use, in these smaller sizes, the base, the flue, from a schlappen feather. It's very fine fibered and very marabou-like, so you get kind of a proportional slender tail that's ideal for smaller flies, 12s, 14s, things like that. So we're just going to, you can see here the, the fibers kind of, climb up so I'm going to strip all those off because I want to get to a point on the feather that all the fibers are the same length and I'm just going to come down and if I stand the fibers up like this right almost until they go into this is actually part of the main feather we want to stop just short there I've aligned the feathers the fibers rather just by sort of standing them vertically to the the stem and I'm just going to gently strip them off and then fold them up and I've got a nice little even clump that's going to make an excellent little tail and I want the tail to be about from the bead to the just where the bend starts so that's going to be my tail that sticks out I'm going to transfer that measurement up there's where the thread is hanging so I'm just going to trim all of the fluff in front of my thumb and forefinger away and that's where I'm going to do a couple of wraps around Make sure that's on top, not let go of everything, and just sort of lift up and move the thread back in open turns. And by lifting it up and holding it with a little bit of tension, those fibers are going to stay always aligned 
wherever you want them, in this case on the top of the hook shank. They're not going to spin around. So now we've got the tail in place, that's looking good. We're going to come back to about the midpoint, just slightly in front of the hook point. And then we're going to put a little bit of flash in the tail. And I'm just going to use some red crystal flash. You could use a UV pearl would be another good option. And I'm just going to come in and secure this on, just like that. Just got one turn, I've got a length sticking out in front, the majority of the fibers sticking out back, and I'm just going to take the, the uh, strand of crystal flash from behind the tying point and secure that down the near side of the hook, right down to the base of the tail, come back up, grab the remaining strand, hold it down the far side, and just walk that thread back. So what I've done is I've sandwiched the tail, the uh, Schlappen flu tail is sandwiched on either side by a red strand of crystal flash. I'm just going to stroke them together and trim the crystal flash just slightly longer than the tip, so it's a little bit of a, a flash tail. And you can see when that goes together, it's going to get wet and all blend together and just give that nice little attractive. You don't want to overdo it. One strand down each side is fine. So for the body, uh, I think Todd originally used a product called Vampire Chenille or something like that that he got over in England, and that's where the fly got its name from, the Vampire Leech for the body material. I'm going to use some Brill 5mm in black. It's kind of a UV black. It's got black and blue. It's just a really great color for this fly, and it's pretty close, I think, to what Todd used. And I'm just going to take this, expose the core a little bit, tie that in, Move the thread right up to the back of that bead. Just a few more wraps to hold it there. And then I'm just going to quite simply wind this brill forwards. So one wrap directly in front of the previous wrap and use your thumb and forefinger to stroke those fibers back. We want these fiber fibers to stick out as much as we can. We try not to, to trap any down. And what you can do sometimes is just stop your wrapping and kind of twist the, uh, the brill in this case just to take make sure that the fibers radiate out because that's what we want. We want a nice these fibers to stick out and not get trapped. So we're just going to one wrap right next door to the other all the way up right behind the bead. Just pack it in there. Like so, you can even moisten your fingers a little bit. You've got a good firm pull, a couple of wraps over the top, a couple of wraps in front. Come in with your scissors, nip away the excess, apply some super glue. In this case, I'm just going to put some Solares or Solares bone dry, just coat that onto the thread, moisten my fingers. Work that coated thread right into the tie-off point. Dig out your whip finisher. Do a nice little whip finish. And then find your tying light. Come in and cure. You can really see how that chartreuse bead pops as I'm curing the bone dry. But, uh, you could also tie these with a hot orange, but I've had really good luck particularly in the fall months, uh, fishing this fly under an indicator with the chartreuse bead. So if it ain't broke, I'm not going to fix it. So there you have it. There is the THT Baby Vampire, or as I prefer to call it, the Eddie Munster. Just a deadly little micro leech pattern that's fast becoming a favorite. This and my baby leech, uh, bruised, be my go-to mini leech or baby leech patterns. So the key with these head turner beads is how you tie the fly on to get them to suspend horizontally. So you just want to take your tippet, in this case using some of the Floriflex Strong, this is some 4X, use 4X, 3X, 2X, and you can see I've tied this on using a clinch knot and cinch that knot just back a vertical towards the hook point and this fly will hang perfectly horizontal. Now if you're casting and retrieving this fly, you could certainly tie it on this way. I'd probably more often use a non-slip loop knot like I do with the majority of with all of my cast and retrieve presentations. But whenever I'm hanging any kind of slotted bead or now these tungsten head turner bead flies on a jig hook or a standard hook, 
Um, with the concave side of the bead pointing forwards, you'll be able to balance any f hook you want. A scud hook, a standard shank hook, or in this case, a jig hook. So keep that in mind whenever you're using these beads if you want to fish them vertically in a balanced configuration.